Hi everyone. Uh, we have Alice, who was the woman slash Mr. Jacobs. We have our hipster Hurst Trevor in. Wearing the same sweatshirt. Where yeah, right? he's almost the exact same outfit actually. <laughs> Ollie Owens, who lives in at Hurst. Uh, we have Stephen, uh, he was Ed, and Mark, who uh, was the condemned, as well as did all of our sound and music and a lot of stuff. And you are? I'm Glenn. I wrote it and kind of directed it. Okay, well, kicking that off, do you want to point out this was your first short film? Yes. And, um, yes, let's hear it for that. So, what brought you to making your own first short film? Um, well, I've been wanting to do one for a long time. Um, I've worked on a couple other ones in the past, and it was always that thing that I, yeah, but I can't really do it. And then actually, I started coming to stuff like this and seeing other people who had no budgets and had not a lot of experience in it, and I made some contacts, and you know, I got advice from people like John, and I know Derek's not here, but Derek Carey, and uh, Corey, and a lot of other local filmmakers who uh, show that it is possible to do it, so I finally just said, screw it, get a weekend, get a crew, and do it. And how did you solo the casting crew? Friend, 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 friend. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I put out like a, a casting call on Facebook. I've had uh, mostly friends reply, a couple people I didn't know who kind of threw in, but time didn't work with some of them, and one of them had an actor lined up to actually play the role I ended up playing, but his wife's due date was the day after, or the day before we did shooting, so a little sketch in whether he'd be able to commit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how about the rest of you? Have you done any film work before? And on top of that, if you have not, especially, what was your thought when Glenn approached you about this? Um, yes, I've actually done quite a few films. Um, I was a murder victim for modus operandi. Um, I am in Zombie Frat House, which was filmed all this summer and was actually supposed to come out this month, but there were some issues with a hard drive that fell off the table, and so some editing has to be redone, and so hopefully that'll come out in December. Um, and numerous other films, and I do stage acting as well. So. And yeah, Glenn's a friend, um, he's been a friend for a long time, um, friends with my husband, and um, so, and I'm kind of in the rockabilly scene and stuff, so I get cast a lot as like 50s housewives and things like that, so. But yeah, we need to, and I love horror movies, so when you asked me to be in the I was like, um, yes. <laughs> and we gave our most accomplished actors the least <laughs> um, yeah, I work pretty closely with uh, Milwaukee Film. I'm Milwaukee and I teach uh, high school kids how to write screenplays every year, and we turn one of them into a film, so. Okay. I approached Glenn. Because <laughs> he wants me to approach, not, no offense, but it was one of those, I want to help, how can I help, and it turned into a, you can help by belching, so I got a couch and drink beer to you. <laughs> and that. I've actually never done film before, and I really only started watching horror movies last year. I started with went to the Madison Film, film Festival last year, and so that was my introduction to all of this. Saw a Glenn's post looking for people online, and said, sure, this sounds like fun. Who's doing your sound, too? So. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Uh, hard lessons learned, and that's kind of something that we just want to dive into because especially this was your first time and it was you had the idea and you went with it which I think is fantastic and so want to just kind of embellish on that so hard lessons learned for anyone in the audience that might be thinking you know I want to make something too um, always have a backup day scheduled for shooting <laughs> um, we did we did all everything was shot in one day and then when we went over the footage we're like ah, we could have reshot that we shoot that, but a lot of it was trying to get everyone together at the same the same time. And the outdoor shots, it was kind of a an overcast day, and it's hard to replicate that because you can't control the weather. So that was a big one. And having as much done as you can ahead of time, pre-production is huge. Um, 
our camera guy, the guy who did all the camera work, all the video editing and stuff, he left already, but... Oh, he's he's great. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you left. I was going to leave and then I said, get up here. Yeah, I mean, he planned out a lot of the shots ahead of time and stuff like that, because he's actually done, you know, he's done video work before. So, this is Dave. He did, he did. Without the help, I think that uh, one of the things we learned was that uh, it always takes 20 times longer than you think it's going to take. And uh, preparation is really important, but there are things you can't control. Like, it started to rain, you know, the day that we went to shoot. And we thought about it for a little bit, we're like, you know what? It's like a horror film. Rain is good. This isn't a bad thing. So you have to learn to work with what you have uh, and, and understand that there's going to be things you don't have any control over and you just have to go with it. And, like Glenn said, try to plan and have some extra days to shoot and some backup cameramen and, and things like that. So. And uh, people cast reflections in glass. <laughs> so, Especially the ones holding cool mics. Yeah. So, so you, we, we always had two cameras running. Unfortunately, we only had one cameraman. So he'd be looking through one and it looks perfect. But then we're looking at the cuts. and like, that was not going to do the other camera yet. The other camera got all the rest of the casters not in the scene reflected in the window. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of little things that you don't, it doesn't, you know, how often do you think about reflections? You don't. But now I know the next one I do, I'll be like, where's their glass or anything shiny? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before we see if anyone has any other questions, I got one. Was the devil Scottish or Irish? <laughs> it was kind of Irish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The thing was with the two, there was, there was the, the voice I practiced and practiced and practiced. And then for whatever reason, I didn't do the exact voice that I practiced. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I tried different voices and I ran it past some people and they're like, do that one. And I almost did that one. <laughs> Does anyone in the audience have any questions? We have one. I want to know the story behind the red pill. <laughs> uh, the red coat, uh, my friend Phil, who is one of the lovely volunteers here, said, do you want a red coat? And I'm like, yeah, I can make that work. The, the whole part with the coat wasn't even in the original script. He just showed me the coat, and I'm like, yeah, I can work that in. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Go. Who made or where did you get the cloth? Uh, the coffin, actually, I have a friend who is... A funeral director, and he had that in his garage. <laughs> his wife was rather upset when we brought it back and we're done with it. <laughs> so that's something to point out too to anyone that's thinking about making a film is exploit the people that you know. <laughs> yeah. If you yeah. know a funeral director, get the casket. <laughs> anyone else have any other questions? Oh yes, in the back. This is for everyone. Uh, what's your next project? Uh, why don't you start? Um, I've got uh, a film that I'm working on right now. It's really a sci-fi uh, film uh, based on a story that uh, someone else had written and I'm writing a script for it right now. So uh, I'm really into sci-fi and uh, I'm hoping that uh, short of uh, some technical issues that obviously we're going to run into uh, later on that, that it's going to come together pretty well. So it's, it's, just, it's nice to have a good group of people to work from because uh, we were talking about this earlier. Um, I don't, you know, have a, a really good story nailed down yet, but over time I will, and you find one person who can act, or two people that can act, and that's going to allow you to find 10 more, or 15 more, um, and you're also going to find more cameramen, sound people, people who've written scripts who can really help you out. So, um, yeah, that, my hope is to, to do a couple more short films. That can be and then I've got two, two other shorts rough scripted out that we hope to shoot next summer, or next spring slash summer. And I'm also working on uh, a feature that'll be several years down the road. That would require more money than than the, like 400 bucks we spent on this. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I'm working on. It's kind of a loaded question for me because, as I mentioned, I do theater um, acting and producing, and so I um, have a bunch of stuff coming up. Um, if you actually go to my website, rockabillygirlproductions.com, um, everything's on there. Um, but one thing I should mention is that um, back in May, I produced Milwaukee's first um, sort of mini horror festival called Horror Orama at the Underground Collaborative um, downtown in the Shops Grand Avenue, and I'm going to be doing that again next year. 
Um, it's tentatively scheduled for May 31st, but it's looking like we might have to bump it back up to May uh, to April. So again, if you just go to rockabillygirlproductions.com, um, it'll be up there. Um, a definite date will be up at least by January. So check that out. Um, I would love to have people um, uh, show some. I would love to show some other short horror films. So get in touch with me if you're interested in that. Um, and in February, um, I'm producing an event called Charlie's Chocolate Cabaret. It's going to be a, a naughty, mature audiences only cabaret show inspired by Willy Wonka and Charlie and Chocolate Factory. So. I just finished draft one of my first feature uh, based on some paranormal activity that happened in Massachusetts in the 70s. So editing that and then hopefully shooting it one day. I used the experience that I've gained by being here years past. I volunteered at a film premiere in Milwaukee over the summer and shot the Q&A and everything, which felt very familiar, um, for a movie called Milo's Upgrade. And might be doing some, some more work helping them out with some stuff. Uh, if Glenn will have me back for one of the other shorts, I'll play with uh, that team again, if it allows me. Uh, and I'm also trying to finish up the first draft of something that's a little more controlled to me. I'm primarily a musician. I'm working on composing a piece for the South Milwaukee Middle School to go along with the piece they're working on, uh, Beowulf. So I'm writing my, an orchestral piece on that right now. Uh, as long as we're talking about websites, centralbatterymusicworks.com if you're looking for any music. Working orchestral, electronic, or orchestral electro, as I like to call it. And any other projects? Whatever they'll ask me to do, I'll do it. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the cast and crew 